Hello Well Life family, it's Emily and Rebecca back for another Tasty Tuesday. So we hope you enjoyed the last one. Today we are talking all about the big fat myth. And so one thing that Dr. Ely really likes to say is fat doesn't make you fat any more than vegetables make you green. If you've done any of our Life Renewed programs, listen to his lectures, you, you know that one, you're familiar with that one. Um, I do want to say that I think that most patients that come to us at this point are familiar with this. Like they, they understand that we do have to have some healthy fats in our diets, but we can all still fall back into that trap of, of looking at a package and it says low fat and you go, oh, I think that's a good idea. But when companies take the fat out of products, they replace it with sugar. Um, snack rolls cookies. If you remember those, my mom yes. loved those. They were always in our cabinet yeah. and they were healthy because yeah. they were fat free, but not really. Mm -hmm. They were full of sugar. So, um, Rebecca, why do our bodies need fat? Well, fat is just one of our body's most basic building blocks. Um, we have 10 trillion cells in our bodies and every one of those needs fat, high quality fat. And even your brain is 60% fat and it has to have those good high quality fats, the omega-3s for cell communication. Um, and so when you give your body the high quality fat, you, you're boosting your, your cognition and your memory, um, you're metabolizing insulin and controlling your blood sugar. And you know when you have proper blood sugar control, that is um, gonna help with your body burning fat. It, good fats decrease hunger, they help you lose weight, and it's not the fat that makes you fat. Again, it is that sneaky little added sugar um, in the processed foods that, um, that does it. Mm -hmm. So I just want to mention really quickly, you do have to be careful about sourcing your oils. Just due to some of our labeling laws, uh, some oils like avocado oil, olive oil, they're not completely olive oil or completely avocado oil. It's gotten better since there's been some independent testing going on. Uh, but you just want to really be careful about where you're getting, and we can we can definitely help with that. Yeah, absolutely. So, what are some high quality fats? When we say healthy fats, we tell people eat your healthy fats. Okay. Well, we're we're talking about the oils like olive oil um, that has been in the human diet for thousands of years. We're talking about avocado oil, coconut oil and grass-fed butter and ghee, and we say grass-fed or pastured because those retain more of the vitamins and minerals than just your um, commercial dairy products. Mm -hmm. And those are all really good oils that you can use. Um, and whole food sources of fat include grass-fed meat and wild game, like wild-caught fatty fish, of course, like salmon, um, sardines are a great source, nuts, seeds, um, and avocados. Yep. So uh, we hear a lot about vegetable oils and they're very widely used, they're very cheap. Are those healthy? Unfortunately, the vegetable oils have been promoted as being heart healthy and that is just um, outdated science and faulty science. And um, we'll give you a little bit of history on the vegetable oils and you can maybe do a little bit of your own research and see what you think um, about them. But um, it started, the, the vegetable oil um, replacing the traditional fats like butter and lard kind of started um, in the late 1800s, early 1900s. <clears throat> Two guys you might have heard of, William Proctor and James Gamble, um, were soap makers and they decided that they could use all this excess cottonseed oil um, to make soap, but then they figured out that since nobody was using cottonseed oil for fuel anymore, they could take this cottonseed oil and hydrogenize it. And it could turn into something that looked a lot like lard and um, people could cook with it and everything else. And um, so they turned it into a product called Crisco. And <laughs> you know, I am very sorry to my grandmother and my great grandmother who made some killer fried chicken, chicken fried steak, mm -hmm. like, really good pie crust with the Crisco, yeah. not a good idea. And they just kind of happened to leave out when they were doing this Crisco, they happened to leave out that cottonseed oil was actually classified as a toxic waste, mm -hmm. um, but they turned it into Crisco and marketed it that way. And so, um, you know, that was kind of the start of it. And then the other vegetable oils followed with the soybean and the corn and the safflower. 
Um, all of those followed suit. They're low cost. Um, there's really good marketing. They're incredibly highly processed and in the process of um, getting the oils from these seeds and things, um, they use byproducts from petroleum um, and a lot of other things and, and um, it's just, uh, it's highly processed. Not something you want to put in your body. Not really, not, not good at all. It's very, very inflammatory for your body. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the, a little history on the vegetable oils there. So where did this idea that vegetable oils are healthy, where did that come from? Well, we were doing a little bit of research. There's a book called The Big Fat Surprise. Um, and she, uh, the author talks a little bit about why does the American Heart Association promote vegetable oils as being healthy and who started that and things like that. And so um, it was in the 1940s that there was um, this little new thing called the American Heart Association was being formed. And that, um, the American Heart Association received a huge million dollar donation from a couple of guys named Procter and Gamble. If you remember those from our Crisco um, uh, talk a minute ago. And so the American Heart Association with that funding from Procter and Gamble began to um, promote vegetable oils as, as heart healthy, um, a healthier alternative to animal fats. And at the same time, kind of around the same time, there was a guy named Ansel Keys, and he introduced his diet lipid hypothesis, which was basically, he had um, done some research, had some data that um, he found where intake of uh, dietary saturated fat raised cholesterol and therefore raised your incident of uh, cardiovascular disease. And um, so, he started, um, because animal fats are high in saturated fat, he started basically demonizing animal fats and promoting the, ve uh, the vegetable oils as well. Um, and so along with the marketing by Procter & Gamble and their donations to the American Heart Association and Ansel Keys, um, his data, we have the recommendations by the American Heart Association that uh, vegetable oils are better for you than animal fats and they're really they're really not they're I mean not. The, there are just such better options and, and really Ansel Keys he there were other people doing conflicting research at the same time but he had the backing of the American Heart Association because his findings uh, really confirmed what they were promoting and so he just had the voice to make his opinion heard more than anybody else did but you know we don't we don't agree with that at all um, and there is some new research uh, yeah pretty recent yeah there um, there continues to be because it's still such a widely um, a conventional idea that the intake of dietary saturated fat raises cholesterol and raises incident cardiovascular disease um, more and more studies are being done um, to look at that to see if that is actually the case. I mean, um, we have, and if you're interested, we could share links with you to um, the research uh, that's out there that um, shows that really, even in a two, 2014 meta-analysis, it found that there was no benefit to overall health from reduce, reducing saturated fats or increasing um, the polyunsaturated fatty acids from vegetable oils. Um, there's not evidence to just to support the American Heart Association's claims um, to replace saturated fats with vegetable oils. There's just not the evidence there. Um, and there's also research that suggests that the industrial oils, the vegetable oils, um, contribute to overall inflammation and things like asthma, autoimmune disease, diabetes, obesity, um, mental health, infertility. I mean, just overall inflammation. Huge laundry. Yeah, list. and yeah. so... Um, yeah, if you're interested in some of those, um, that some of that research, let us know. We can share it with you. Yes, we can. Um, and I just want to, this is a little tidbit that I share with patients sometimes, but the, the whole idea that fat is bad for you, at a conference uh, last year that I attended, I learned that the average per person consumption of olive oil per week in the Mediterranean, it, where these people are healthy, right? They're, they're living till they're 100 easily. A liter 
of olive oil per person per week. So obviously the healthy fats are not the issue there. So um, thank you to everybody for joining us again for this Tasty Tuesday. Uh, we really do like to hear from you. So if there's anything that you've heard and you want us to do a Tasty Tuesday on it, a Mythbusters or, or otherwise, just let us know because we're here to help and we're here to untangle some of those uh, nutrition headlines and really peel back all the layers and get to the bottom of what's going on. Thank you.